Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Dad Caw. It is the 25th of September, 2021. And today I'm going to be talking about the Zabalba dev streams, which have recently uh, been put on hold, you could say. They'll mostly just be intermittent. So the cliff notes of the video is, I didn't feel like they were the most productive endeavors that I could have been doing in terms of just raw efficiency of, you know, progress made per hours invested. And so I'm going to be pulling back from them. And I'll get into the, some of the reasons why if you're interested in that. But if you just wanted the update, you'll just see them less often, maybe once or twice a week, as opposed to every other day, which is what they had been up until this point for a good amount of time. And so I guess before I get into why I'm stopping it, I should probably mention why I decided to just do it in the first place. Now, part of that is just because I was excited to share with the progress, you know, with, with everybody who is following the channel, following the projects that I've been working on, the video games themselves instead of mods that I've been working on. And obviously the stuff that uh, Veek was doing as well with the engine, the Antikythera engine. And so I figured, you know, well, occasionally I'll do some Antikythera updates inside the streams, or I'll check out some new features that Veek's working on. And at the same time, I'll be able to show off the tech maps I've been building, you know, the, the campaign planning to some extent, the tutorial design, as well as the obvious, the setting design itself. You know, well, what are the regencies? What are the races? The fact that regencies exist at all, you know, what exactly is going on within the world of Zabalba? Why should you be interested? Well, obviously I was trying to answer those questions, try to pose those questions initially and get people interested in it. And I figured streaming was a good way to do that. Now, that part is certainly not really negotiable. I think it's actually 100% true that by streaming, I was able to generate some interest in the project that wouldn't have been there otherwise because people could have tuned in, saw what was hot on the day, said, oh, wow, you're working on this regency. I haven't even heard about this regency before today, so I'll ask you some questions about it. You know, that stuff happened all the time. So it makes a whole lot of sense to me uh, as to why I was doing that from a, a public arms reach, you know, sort of like, hey, check this out and, and, and see what you think kind of deal. From that perspective, it makes total sense. But one of the things that I did find pretty frequently is that even though I was very excited to share all of this stuff, I was oftentimes sharing, you know, obviously somewhat half-baked ideas because they weren't done yet. I was working on them as the streams themselves progressed and I would work on them a little bit off stream as well. And it was never meant to be an exhaustive sort of documentation of every single hour spent working on the project or on the universe. That's just unwieldy and, you know, it's impossible to actually cover all of those because a lot of the times when you're thinking about ideas, you're not even on the computer. You might be taking a walk somewhere or something, right? So I think anybody who's, uh, done something creative can probably uh, sort of identify with that sort of statement that uh, some of the, a non-trivial percentage of the time that you, you are actually thinking about the projects that you're working on might not be in front of a computer actually working on them per se. You're just thinking about them or maybe you're doing some some research or something that could constitute research. Like in this case, if you're designing a sci-fi world, you might be reading some sci-fi or watching some sci-fi media or something like that. And, and then you get some ideas and, and you're like, oh, well, actually, it'd be kind of cool to have this. Uh, or some version, some filtered, you know, d reconfigured version of something that I'm experiencing in some other form of media in my project. So that stuff happens all the time. And it's unrealistic for you to sort of document all of it. So as a result of all of these things, and of course, the, the chief thing that, again, as I said at the top of the video, I'm not really that interested in continuing to develop this sort of thing because of the fact that, um, at least at the current rate that I was going, I did feel like if I spent the same amount of time working on the content, uh, without the stream there, I would probably get more work done. And I tested this hypothesis before deciding to move away from the streams themselves. And I was, uh, I, well, let's just say I was very much correct. So the figures I have for you, the empirical evidence, so to speak, is that when I was doing sessions where I was not recording and not streaming, I was able to do what normally took me about an hour or an hour and a half's worth of work in 25 minutes. And that 25 minute figure is sort of the amalgam of a couple of different attempts doing the same thing. And so it wasn't always that, you know, it was always 25 minutes, sometimes it was a bit less, sometimes it was a bit more, but just that that sheer like cutting it in half or cutting it in three quarters or whatever the case may be, th that made it very obvious to me that I was missing some aspect of the, of the puzzle here. If I was trying to be efficient with my time, I was trying to be able to generate the necessary planning materials so that when the engine is operational, when the assets are operational, we can actually start working on these, you know, missions and the campaigns, the content itself. We can do that very easily. It didn't really make any sense to me to keep going at the rate that I was going. And I think the other thing that's important to note in this equation as well is that the planning I'm doing is actually not really that relevant to what is currently going to be happening in the, the timeline of the project's development, right? Because 
it's not like right now we're engaged in the development of 3D models for the the asset. I mean, DF might be working on something sort of behind the scenes, but w by and large, we haven't entered into full scale asset production. Uh, we haven't even really entered into full scale like 2D asset production. Obviously, Knight of the Rum's been busy doing some stuff, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, but for this, the sort of like that has not been like a, a total focus of of the development team, right? Right now, what we're doing is we're finalizing some plans for the editor, and we are continuing to develop core features like AI, pathfinding, fog of war, et cetera. And some of those things are further along than others, but we at least are, have started into the conceptual domain for all of those elements. And uh, a lot of them have obviously received actual code base changes, which you can check out in the release demos in the Discord server if you're not there already. We do throw out occasional demonstrations of what exactly is possible within the engine, what features we have operational, and we know that, for example, networking is just a placeholder solution right now. And we definitely need to change it up and make it more robust going forward. And that, that would be one example of something that's not done yet. So we're basically still dealing with some core entry level stuff for the engine, which means we can't, in good conscience, start working on content, start working on missions. Uh, if, you know, beyond maybe ex exploring how the editor is shaping up in a technical sense, we can't really do that for the sake of building campaigns. And we also can't really do that with the idea of like, exploring how the tech trees are going to be shaping up. Like one exercise I would love to do as I'm developing the tech trees themselves within the game itself, not just in an abstract on a tech map on a website, is be able to see how the races fare against each other, how these regencies duke it out and who comes out on top with what composition. And for that, we would need melee maps before we start working with campaign maps. And my ideal scenario would be just like essentially what Blizzard did not do for Brood War and what they tried to do and failed for StarCraft II is try to essentially test the uh, regencies themselves in a melee environment, a skirmish environment where you know, all else being equal, theoretically player skill should determine what happens and see where any, you know, shortcomings actually are from the uh, game design of the races themselves. And so if we can harp on unit design and regency design and general flow of, of team compositions and, you know, unit compositions as well, that can give us a lot of information that's going to be very important for finalizing the general cohesion of the, the balance for the regencies themselves. Because I want all of the campaigns to be played on the same live patch as before. And I don't want there to be some massively, you know, unwieldy amount of difficulty adjustments need to be made to the maps because we are tweaking the stats of the units, right? So it would be really good to be able to finalize those to some degree before we get into the nitty gritty of like making map specific terrain adjustments based on certain range breakpoints or whatever that might be subject to change because we haven't finished all the units. That's like an easy example. If you didn't know how far away a siege tank in siege mode would be able to attack, you know, a unit, that was going to obviously affect how you design maybe islands or, you know, bridges or these like, you know, gaps between terrain. And you're specifically designing it so that siege tanks can't abuse them. That would be your sort of, uh, your, your, you could say, a, not a bookmark, but a, that would be your break point, basically. You'd be like, okay, we, we definitely can't have, you know, things that are smaller than X amount of range, X amount of tiles away. Well, I don't know what that number is. I need to solve for that X, solve for the, the equation there before I can start working within, you know, really nitty gritty, ma tightly defined maps. Now, until then, I certainly could be able to produce some layouts that would be functional if then expanded upon. I do admit that. But even that is far from what I've been doing in the planning side of things. You know, if, if we're just going by that, I've got plenty of missions already documented and planned for the tutorials and for the Psychoran campaign, where I, at any point I can work within, you know, somewhere around the line of like 10 missions, uh, maybe a little bit more than that, that are ready to be developed and ready to be sort of uh, blocked, you know, gray boxed, if you will, if you want to use a term that I borrow from CSGO, a common parlance, where you're building a map and you're just using dev textures and you're still working on the layout and it's gameplay focused drafts of the missions themselves. That's what we can do uh, once we get the editor online. That's certainly something that I could spend time doing. But before that, I would like Melee, I would like AI, I would like the opportunity to play in multiplayer, and I would like to be able to actually work on the regencies themselves in an in-game context. So the development might seem to go quiet on the YouTube channel, and mainly it's because I'm shifting focuses away from stuff that I think is really that useful to show on stream and more towards stuff that's more efficient with my time while also being more on topic and more relevant to what we are currently doing in our current stage of development for Cosmonarchy Retail, for Zabalba as a universe, for Antikythera as an engine. And as we get further along, you can expect more Dadkaw-esque updates, 
where I'll probably use this video series as a bit of a format for that. Maybe I'll find some other way to characterize that. Obviously, I still have to build the No Frauds Club YouTube channel up at some point, so I would like to end up using that for these updates. But you can stay tuned for the immediate future. We'll see what we can you know, dredge out. And I guess the next time we have this big demo, maybe I'll build a bit of a presentation and slap that on the, uh, the No Frauds Club YouTube channel and then post a video or announcement here saying that, hey, that, that channel exists, so you should go subscribe to it and see what's up. So I suppose we'll leave it there. The streams will continue less frequently than before. We'll still probably be focusing on those, you know, tech maps, those campaign planning sessions, those Regency general design dis, dis, you know, sessions overall. And we'll, we'll try to continue figuring out the, the, the sort of conceptual stages of a lot of what is currently going on. Uh, but because of the fact that that is less relevant to what we're doing right now, those streams, they're just gonna be a little bit less frequent. So thanks for sticking around and ingesting all this information. You got a question, post it below. You wanna annoy me in real time, head on over to the Discord server. And uh, until then, I will uh, see you guys next time.